Well, hello guys. <laughs> this is uh, Charles Richard and uh, welcome to another uh, video. Okay, uh, this time uh, we're going to be talking again. We're going to continue the series about Fujifilm cameras. Uh, the uh, Fujifilm X-T4 uh, is uh, pretty much uh, what we're going to be uh, focusing on throughout the series, but within that series, I'm also going to be bringing you uh, new things, you know, uh, new uh, stuff that is really, in my opinion, right, is uh, something that is really worthwhile looking into uh, because a lot of these um, uh, cameras and a lot of this new gear, you know, that's coming out is, is really good, you know, it's really, really good, uh, you know, and so I think that uh, a lot of times, uh, we get so much, you know, into the fact that, uh, oh, it has to be uh, something that's very expensive for it to be really good. And that's not necessarily so. All right. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about something that is very affordable. Uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, 7 Artisan. I have, this is a brand new lens. I just bought it today so I can do this review for you guys. All right. Uh, this is the 7 Artisan 0.95, 50 millimeters, 0.95. I did a review about the 35 millimeter uh, a few weeks ago, right? This happens to be the 7 Artisan that you see right now on the camera. Uh, this is the uh, 7 Artisan 0.95. Very, very, very highly recommended for a, uh, a budget-friendly lens. Uh, I think it is uh, the one lens that I... Um, I highly recommend not only this particular lens, but the 0.95, and it's not only because I bought it, it is because the character of the lens really is very perfect for uh, doing video work and doing cinematography cinematography work. Uh, so we're going to uh, be talking uh, a little bit about that. Uh, we're also going to be talking about uh, these uh, microphones that I'm using uh, right now. Um, I got another uh, set today. Um, it is the... Um, Wireless uh, Go 2. <clears throat> Let me see if you can see it there. Wireless Go 2, as you can see right there. All right. Uh, these uh, microphones uh, can handle the, the transmitter, or actually the receiver. I'm sorry. The receiver can handle uh, two transmitters, uh, or uh, it can uh, handle uh, one. You know, in other words, they sell two different versions. They sell uh, one with the two transmitters or one with one transmitter. I bought the one with the one transmitter because I don't use two. I usually uh, do my own videos, you know, and I narrate my own videos. And uh, this is only uh, $200, okay? And now, yes, there's out there's there's microphones out there that's a lot cheaper. Yes, 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 okay? The problem with that is that when you need a microphone that is reliable, you know, that uh, if you're serious about doing any kind of work, you know, per personally, I want something that's reliable, all right? So if I have to spend $50 more or $40 more, reliability is worth 100 times more to me, number one. Number two, the quality of the sound of the road is uh, pretty much, you know, uh, very, very good. You know, it's a, it's a very solid and it's a very good sounding microphone. And with that said, you know, uh, the microphone also has a, what is called a redundancy when it records. So, for example, you know, if you're recording your audio straight into your camera, if for so for so for for whatever reason, if so for so whatever reason, you know, the microphone or the audio from the microphone is messed up, you know, it's not clean, it's not clear, you know, you have a backup track, a backup audio track that is recorded internally inside the uh, receiver, okay, of the Rode Wireless Go 2, uh, which you can actually, you know, download into your computer and sync it up to your uh, to your video. And uh, that way you don't lose your audio, you don't lose your footage, you know. So that safety feature is worth, you know, a thousand dollars for me. Because sometimes if you're doing, for example, you know, and not, I don't do weddings, but for those of you that are filming, for example, a wedding and you're doing a video on a wedding and your audio gets messed up, guess what? You cannot 
do the wedding again you know it's that's just like a one-time deal you know whatever you capture you capture and so it's always good to be able to have some sort of redundancy uh especially in in events like this in situations like this now if you are like myself that you know i record this and if the audio is no good you know i uh do take two and i do take three until my audio is good and it doesn't really matter but when you're in situations and scenarios like uh you know some of these uh, wedding photographers or videographers and you need to be able to get you know that audio right spot on you know you want to be able to know that you have some sort of a backup in case uh you know uh, your camera uh, gets uh, a faulty audio, uh, and and that's and that's a good thing, right? Now, as, uh, about the lens, all right. The lens that I got, <coughs> excuse me, is the uh, Seven Artisan. Okay, that's the Seven Artisan, and um, it's a wonderful lens. Okay, it's it's a wonderful lens. Uh, here you go. That's uh, what it looks like. It is a uh, 0 0.95. It is a 0 0.95, and. Um, the reason that I like, uh, that I'm liking these lenses, all right, number one is because they're very inexpensive. This one is only 240 bucks. You see that? $240, all right? And $240 in reality for a lens that gives you the colors, okay, and the quality that this particular lens does, you know, I think you're getting a heck of a deal. And then not only that, but for those of you that, that have never really done cine work, you know, because it's a difference when you mount the camera like I have right here, that I mounted it on a tripod, and, uh, you know, I don't really have to uh, do a lot of uh, maneuvering uh, with the lens because, uh, you know, the, the camera's being held by the tripod, right? It's easier to control the um, aperture and the focus ring, but, Here's one thing that a lot of people don't know. Let me move a little bit forward so I can show you, all right? This lens here, for example, the aperture ring, although it is clickless, you know, which uh, clickless is really the way to go for video, it's in the front, it is not in the back, okay? So when you are moving your aperture and your aperture is in the front, your hand, all right, your movement of your hand is in the front of the lens. When your aperture ring is in the back of the lens, all right, and although it is clickless, right, you know, as you move that aperture, you're also going to be rubbing against the body of your camera. Therefore, it's going to give you, it's going to transfer those uh, movements, okay, those little uh, jolts and jerky movements, you know, because your hand is actually rubbing against the body and therefore you're going to get a little bit more shake on your video due to the fact that your hand is rubbing against the body of the camera. So if you're using a manual lens and you're using it completely manual without a focus ring, uh, you want to have your, your aperture in the front because when you hold your camera, the way that you're holding your camera is you're holding the camera with your palm on your, on, underneath the camera to hold and support your camera. And you have your focus ring here, which is nice and silky smooth as you can see here, all right? And then if I need to, to uh, you know, adjust my aperture, I can just move forward, all right? And it's not gonna give me that jolt because the camera is still sitting on the palm of my hand while the other hand is actually helping it get stable, all right? That's something that a lot of people don't know, all right? And so the, the fact that this lens has the aperture ring in the front and that it is clickless it is a definite pro for cine work all right for to doing cine uh you know any kind of video work handheld all right uh the focus ring also it has a very uh very nice silky smooth it is i want to say um let me see about a 90 degree throw excuse me, it's about a 90 degree throw and it's very, very silky smooth. It is also marked 
on the top of the lens, oops, let me uh, um, use this finger, on the top of the lens, it's got markings. So if you are familiar with doing video work and cinema work, you know, sometimes you can take these markings and these markings will tell you, okay, so if you are uh, one, uh, one feet away from your subject, or if you are two feet away from your subject, your focus ring should be there. In other words, the two will have a marking there, and then you have an arrow which says that is, uh, if you are, would be, or if your subject is at two feet from you, if you put it at two, you'll be in focus. All right, so that's how you work that. And the ability to be able to do that, okay, with this kind of a lens is incredible. It is really, really incredible. And the, the silkiness, all right, and the build quality, it's all metal to begin with. Uh, it's, uh, it's very solid. Uh, it's very hefty. Uh, but guys, for 240 bucks, you know, it's awesome. It's really awesome. Now, you guys know that I have the 56 1.2, but the 56 1.2, it is a $1,000 lens, all right? A $1,000 lens. Now, if you need, and if you're just starting out into doing film work, you know, you can actually get the Trio, which is the 23.95, the 35.95, and the 50.95 for under $800. You can have all three lenses for under $800. And that is a great start uh, for somebody that is just getting into uh, the industry. And uh, even, even for somebody that's been in the industry for a long time. Personally, I love the character of this lens. I love the look that these new seven artisan lenses give i don't care about the, the the price the price is not important for me the price is not important here for me what's important is the color the character the beauty behind it the oranges are so so rich and popping and modern the greens are awesome the aqua colors that i can get are just gorgeous you know the follows are perfect the bokeh behind you is very smooth it is not busy it is not uh, overpowering uh, you know it is a lens that in the world of cinematography it can make you or break you you know what i'm saying and sometimes you know you look at lenses that are very expensive because they add you know rings around it uh, they add the title cine lens you know just because it's a cine lens doesn't mean that it's necessarily better than this because I've seen a lot of cine lenses out there that are not as good as this all right and I've seen cine lenses that are definitely better than this but let's you know let's 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 be realistic about this you know for somebody that wants to get into cinematography for somebody that wants to have the ability to to produce wonderful work you know what i'm saying this is a great start for you guys you know and as you progress as you start getting more work as you start learning you know more and you start creating your style you know of filming then you can you know make decisions as to uh, whether you'd rather and uh, you know rather go out and buy a uh a zine lens or a uh canon cinema lens you know or an slr lens or go anamorphic you know you can create all those decisions afterwards but this guy guys this it's a beautiful start. It's not out of focus, so it's not really meant for photography, and it's not really meant, uh, you know, to uh, put it somewhere where your camera is at a certain place. You know what I'm saying? And you move around, and the cam and the, the lens is is going to be focusing on you. No. Now you can use it. You know, right? you can use it. Uh, if you know how to use your markings in here, if you know how to use your markings up in here and let's say I'm going to be two feet away from the lens, I can set my focus to two feet. I can come back, you know, to to where I need to sit or where I'm going to stand or where I'm going to uh, be doing my, my filming and I can uh, press record and I'm going to be in focus. Now, don't move back 
from two feet, don't move forward from two feet, stay at two feet. All right, at two feet distance, you know, you're going to be in focus, you know, and so that's how you use this lens, you know, if uh, you don't have um, uh, autofocus uh, and if you wanted to uh, use it for, let's say, live streaming or stuff like that, uh, this lens is beautiful. It is a beautiful overhead lens. Some of you guys have streaming channels, right, where your camera is on top because you want to show something on your table, right? All right, well, this lens, if you set it up on your camera, because your camera is not going to move, all right, your camera is going to stay there. And if you set it to be in focus because, okay, because it, it is a 0.95, you know, indoors means you don't need very much light, number one. Okay, number two, the quality is going to be super good. Okay, super awesome, uh, you know. And number three, you know, you're going to be in focus. Right? You don't have to worry about, you know, it being out of focus because your distance is not going to change. Your desk is not going to change in height, all right. And so you might uh, be uh, reviewing whatever product it is, whether it's a camera or whether it's whatever it is that you're reviewing, you know, it's a great lens. Uh, for overhead, you know, I very highly recommend it. Uh, the 50 millimeter because it gives you a tighter shot, uh, you know, and if you don't want that tighter shot, you can always get the 35 millimeter. That, that's up to you, you know what I'm saying? Depending, depends on how much of the desk you want to show, right? On an over hue and overhead view. Or if you're going to have the lens really close to you, uh, you know, definitely, you know, definitely I uh, very highly uh, uh, recommend it, you know what I'm saying? If you're not going to be moving uh, back and forth, you know, uh, like some some of you guys that are doing live streaming, you sit on the desk and you pretty much talk to us. You don't move around, you don't stand up, uh, you know what I'm saying? You're actually sitting on the desk, you know, these lenses are awesome, awesome awesome for the price for the color for the character you know uh they are very i very highly recommend it and the build quality is incredible plus the warranties on these lenses is also incredible uh they are made in china all right but i am very very <clears throat> impressed because i don't like stuff being made in china i'm gonna tell you that right now i really do not like stuff being made in china because you know the quality of the stuff made in china is uh very uh it's not that good you know what i'm saying but when it comes to these lenses no <laughs> totally, totally the opposite totally the opposite guys you know so i do highly recommend these you know the other thing that i you know recommend that i use a lot uh is uh, these uh jupio batteries these jupio batteries you know power all my systems uh, if i needed power yes i have uh, extra batteries oh, and that's that's one thing that i wanted to uh, talk to you folks about um i made a couple of errors on my last video and i want to correct that when i bought this camera i bought this camera as a kit okay and uh, this camera as a kit well uh, you know came with the xd4 body all right uh it came with the um uh, 18 to 80 millimeter lens which i sold to get my 56 uh, 1.2 uh brand new all right and it also came with a battery and a battery grip, all right? And that's where I said, I think I said battery, all right? It came with a, a battery grip, all right? And it came with three batteries, all right? Two batteries for here and one battery for the camera, a total of three batteries. I don't use the grip, all right? Because, you know, this is more than enough and the batteries of the X-T4 are, have twice the amount of power than the X-T3, than the older batteries, the 126Ws, uh, I think they're called, right? And uh, that's what makes it so really nice. So I actually ended up with all this extra stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, basically what I did was I bought the kit and... Um, <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm almost choked. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I bought the kit. Okay, and um, I sold the uh, 18 to 80 millimeter. All right, and uh, I just wanted to clarify that uh, because uh, I know that I've made that mistake, right? Uh, you know, and the other mistake that I did make was I called the hood, okay, the rubber hood, I called it a lens. Now, I meant, uh, you know, a lens hood is what I meant. I forgot to add the hood, you know, uh, but uh, it, it is what it is. Um, so, yes, 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 you know. Um, 
thank you uh, for being here. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, you know, uh, please uh, feel free uh, to, you know, um, to write it in the comments and uh, I will be more than happy to answer your questions. Uh, the one thing that I added on this lens, uh, by the way, I want to add this also, is I also have a polarizer. It is a uh, Tiffin polarizer. It's a circular polarizer that you can see right there. Uh, I love these polarizers uh, because these polarizers, um, sometimes I like to shoot stuff like, for example, um, in a water or through a window, and you need a polarizer to be able to see clearly through the window or to be able to see clearly through the water, uh, you know, and so uh, that gives me that ability, uh, you know, for all these lenses. And, um, but yes, you know, um, uh, coming up uh, in this series, all right, that I am filming right now uh, with these uh, X-T4, is uh, I have created uh, film simulations uh, for cinema work, okay? These film simulations that I have created, uh, I'm gonna start showing you some of the, uh, the work behind it, and I'm gonna show you some of the work with the different lenses so that you can see, all right, uh, some of the stuff that can be done with the Fuji cameras, all right? I love the X-T4, and there's a reason behind it, and as you start seeing these videos, you will start understanding the uh, the 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 work. Okay, uh, you know how you work these cameras to be able to get the best out of it. One of the film simulations that I created is uh, Doctor Strange. All right, is is I titled it the Doctor Strange film simulation, and what it does, it actually uh, you know looks creates the look. Uh, that if you were in the movie and you were to see uh, Doctor Strange, you know, because, you know, Doctor Strange, and, and I know for some of you guys that are not into uh, cinema work, you probably have not noticed it. But if you look at Doctor Strange, <clears throat> Doctor Strange is, uh, the colors are based on oranges and blues. They're not based on um, uh, teals, which is a very favorite color that a lot of the, the streamers use, you know, now, and uh, reds, you know what I'm saying, and blues. Uh, no, Doctor Strange is mostly a lot of orange. Uh, you know, it's got a lot of orange tinting, all right, in, in some scenes, and a lot of blues. Not aqua blues, but more of a, and not royal blue, uh, but a little bit... Um, it's kind of like between a pastel blue and a royal blue, all right? And the, the colors are just tremendous that, uh, you know, that portray, that are portrayed within that movie. So these new uh, Senate film simulations that I am creating, I am creating them with <clears throat> movie names so that if you want to use it, right, you will understand that that particular film simulation is going to give you uh, a look that is very similar, very close, or almost identical to uh, that particular movie, all right? And so uh, you're going to be uh, seeing some of these film simulations. Of course, your lighting needs to be proper and your, uh, your venue needs to be also adequate uh, so that you can see these wonderful film simulations as well, right? Uh, so with that said, you know, um, let's move on. And uh, I'm glad that you guys are here, you know, and uh, this is my uh, second video back to back, you know, and uh, I'm getting all excited because we are on a roll now. And um, uh, by the way, I got this uh, new, uh, well, <coughs> excuse me, there's a second um, the second um, uh, tripod, and I, I love these tripods, you know, because they're small and I can carry them around and I can, you know, just move them around everywhere. And yeah, I have another one, uh, you know, at the house, but that one is already set and I didn't want to uh, move it around. So I got uh, another one. They're made by ProMaster. They're only like 160 bucks. Uh, let me see if I can show you the box over here. Uh, here's the box. Uh, it is this ProMaster, $160. Uh, but it's so wonderful. It's got an Arca Swiss mount on it. Uh, it's uh, uh, very silky smooth, you know, uh, to be able uh, to move your uh, camera around and do stuff like that, you know. So very highly recommended. Uh, and uh, that's about it, guys. <laughs> that's about it. If you guys have any questions, please, please feel free to ask me in the comments. I'll get back to you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I always try to answer all of uh, uh, 
uh, my uh, comments. Uh, you know, I, I don't have a whole lot of viewers, so uh, therefore I have the ability to answer your questions. And uh, this is my XT4. <coughs> Excuse me. I, that's, uh, I'm sorry that I'm coughing, but when I talk too much, you know, that's what happens. Uh, this is my XT4 with uh, none other than the uh, 7 Artisan, uh, the 50 millimeter uh, F.95. All right, and um, I've got a very inexpensive microphone, and here I am using the uh, Rode Wireless Go 2. That's what you're listening to right now, and I am filming this on my Samsung um, Galaxy Fold, so that, uh, and the reason that I'm filming this on this uh, um, phone, all right, is because uh, I want to show you the camera. If I use the camera to film it, I can't show you the camera, right? Okay, so uh, that's the reason behind it. Okay, so uh, in the meantime, guys, have a great weekend, you know, and I'll see you on my next video, and uh, stay safe, be blessed, cheers, you know, see you on my next video.